Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and welcome to a Geometry Nodes tutorial. What I aim to do is set out and show you how to use Geometry Nodes in the simplest possible manner. But first, a bit of a primer of what a Geometry Node is. Now these were added in Blender. I think Blender 2.93 is when they started showing up and they're a big feature of Blender 3. This here you can see is Blender 3 beta in action and here is one of the examples you can grab. This is the, no the node network controlling the procedural generation of what you see up here. And Geometry Nodes are going to be huge in the world of game development for Blender developers. So you see here, what it allows you to do is create objects that can be controlled using a variety of parameters. Here we just switch out the, um, the seed that's being used to populate the trees there, the sparseness of our trees, the sparseness of houses, and so on. We can also change out the uh, grid that's being controlled here so we could add more rows or take them away. And you're seeing we're getting this geometry updated immediately. This gives you an idea of the power of nodes. The problem is almost all of the examples out there are complicated. And don't go thinking that this is the extent of what is creating this. Oh no, this is part of a three part thing. There's the nodes controlling grass generation. Here's the nodes controlling the tree grouping. And here is the overall nodes for creating the grid. So uh, you can get into some really quite complex examples, not what we are going to try and do here. What we are going to try and do here is create about the simplest demo you can do. Now the cool news is once I sacrifice the default cube here, uh, I have an entire text-based version of this. So what we're going to do is create a voxelized network. Basically what we're going to do is turn any model that we pass in into a cubed version of it. Very simple and straightforward. And as you can see, the entire thing is documented in incredible detail that we are about to go through. So if you want, uh, this will be linked down below if you want to get into it. If you miss a step, whatever else, this is available out there. By the way, for this particular version, I am using the Blender 3.0 beta. Uh, the earlier version should work. The thing is some of these nodes have been changed and some have been deprecated. I'll also show you how to enable deprecated nodes at the end of this video. And by the way, if you want to go ahead and check out that example or some other geometry node examples that are much more complicated than what we were going to cover today, uh, they are available here as well. So I will link all of the relevant documents down below. But what we are going to do now is jump into Blender and get started on what I hope is the simplest tutorial you find. So we're going to start things off. We're going to go ahead and create a new mesh of type monkey. And I'll uh, look down the y-axis at it again. So right there. All right, there we go. So here is our monkey. And now what we want to do is set up a geometry node for this guy. You can see here, you've got the option of going to geometry nodes over here. I don't actually like the default layout for that workspace. So instead what I'm going to do is just bring this guy up and switch this over to the geometry node editor. Now do keep in mind, I am using Blender 3.0 here. So if you do not run the newest version, nodes are going to have different names and so on. So we're going to go ahead and create a new node network. And there you go. That is quite literally the simplest geometry node setup you can. You got an input, you got an output, and done. All right, end of tutorial. Well, no, maybe we'll actually make it do something. So what you want to do is add some nodes in between. Uh, and what we're going to do is go here and add, go down to mesh, and we're doing mesh to points. What this will do is take whatever mesh is passed in, which you saw immediately it connected itself in there, and turn it into a series of points and then it spits it back out on the other end. You could actually, that in itself is a kind of cool result, but let's keep going adding a little bit more detail here. So what you're seeing right now is we got these weird blobs in are being entered in. Let's instead, because we're going to turn this sort of into a voxel type setup. So we're going to go ahead and add in a new node here as an input. So we're just coming here. You can do a search by the way, and we're going to create a node of type cube. So babe, cube goes in like so. And now we're going to take this series of points we created and we're going to create instances on the point. So we're going to come here, add, again, you can search, or I think it's instances here, instance on point. So we'll go ahead and create that guy right there. So you got another node. So you see how this goes. It's basically a left to right network that ends here in the output point over here. And now we're going to wire these points up. So instead of wiring this guy here, we don't want that. What we instead want to do is have this points feed into points over here and mesh feed into the instance like so. And then the end result of this guy will be wired into the output. And then boom, you can immediately see what happens as a result. Now there's a couple of catches with this is uh, our cubes that are being created, our instance cubes over here are way too big. Now we could scale them at the instance level or we could scale them over here. Let's scale them at the source. So what I'm going to do is make these about a tenth of the size. So a tenth of a meter on each one. There you go. So we've got a much more kind of a voxely looking monkey going on right here. So you can definitely see how the nodes all work together to, to make an end result here. 
But another thing you may notice is, well, it's not filling the entire monkey in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit more detail just by simply doing a subdivision in between the group input here and the mesh to points. We're going to subdivide down our original geometry. So then we'll have more to work with here. So I'm going to just go ahead. We'll add another node. And again, everything can be searched for. So right here, sub. And we want to do subdivide mesh like so. And we're going to drop that guy in there. And then we can do the number of subdivisions is controlled right there. So now you see we have a pretty voxely looking monkey. It's kind of, uh, let's bring this guy over here. It's kind of an end result, to be honest. That is amazing how much you can actually accomplish using geometry nodes in a very short period of time. But let's add a little bit more functionality to this guy. Now, one thing you notice is we passed in this subdivision level. So we got this two going on here. Well, what if the chances we wanted to actually have that control? So sometimes the mesh that's being passed in might be dense enough and might work just well. Sometimes we want to have this as a parameter. So what we're going to do is add in go over here to group in the, uh, the property section. So press N to open that up if it's not already there. Go to the group section and you see you can set up inputs and outputs. We're gonna add an additional input. So right now the default input is you get the geometry. The, whatever mesh is being passed in is what you start with, but you can add more. So we're gonna go ahead here and we're gonna add a new input. This is of type integer because it can only be whole numbers. Uh, and we can do a subdivision, like a tool tip that'll show up when you uh, set this value. So it's like number of subdivisions like so, give it a default value. I like the value of two. And finally, we give it a name other than that. So subdivisions, like so. So now we have a parameter that's being passed in. And notice here on your inputs, suddenly you have another value. And all we need to do is just basically literally drag and drop that in. And we immediately see, okay, this isn't two. So what's going on here? Well, this guy has the values attached to it. So you see over here, we'll switch down to there mode, there you see, you can set the number of subdivisions right here as a parameter. So if you wanna go higher, you can go higher. Now, one of the things that you're gonna find is I think I just make my computer very unhappy because I scrolled this value too far to the right. So I don't know how many subdivisions I just created. Uh, it's going to be, a, oh, it's not too, too bad. Okay, it's 374 negative. All right, so that was a stupid value to put in. So what you probably wanna do is set some reasonable minimum. So you won't go low, lower than I uh, actually probably don't want to go lower than one subdivision and you probably don't want to go higher than say, let's go six. So we're going to control that value and then we can also enter the value directly right there. So you can see now we could actually go ahead and set this up to a higher value if we wish and we'll get some more subdivisions, get more blocks out of it. So you see very easy to pass input into these things. Now the cool thing here is this could be created in a library, this geometry node entry, all of this stuff. Uh, I could copy it down, make a, a new instance of it, get rid of Susan completely here. But what I'm going to do is show you in a new scene. So I'm going to create a new scene up here. So basically just go ahead, click this little button right here and we'll create a new scene and I'll call this test scene like so. And now I can create any kind of geometry I want. So for example, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to create a UV sphere. So mesh, UV sphere, boom, like so. Now I can come on down here to modifiers, go here, geometry nodes, like so. And I can now go here, pop down, pick which one I want, like that guy right there. And we now have a cubed um, setup going on here. Now what you probably want to do, let's go back to our default scene here. And we can give this guy a name that actually makes sense. So we'll call this say voxelize, all right, like so. So when you actually go ahead and pick it out of, you, you create a library of these things, whatever, your selection will actually make some kind of sense when you've got it there. But again, if I wanna change the, the levels of values, our voxelization tool is complete. And really, that's the end of the tutorial. This shows you probably the smallest, most discrete uh, geometry node-based graph you could do that would give you an actual result. Now, it's a matter of just come on in here and playing around. You can have geometry nodes uh, call other nodes, so you can nest a node down, so you could create one to make leaves, another one that creates branches, one that creates a tree trunk, and those will all work together to create you a tree, for example. And there are great examples out there, like the ones I've linked down below. So if you want to get into more depth, they are out there. This is the beginner's primer show casing how you can easily create such a network and how you can reuse them in your own projects. Definitely a powerful tool. Now, one last thing to show you before we finish up, if you're following along to another tutorial, especially one that was written in the last say year, I almost guarantee you it's using nodes that were deprecated with um, geometry nodes in Blender 3.0 and up. A lot of the early nodes got new names. If you want to turn that functionality back on, functionality back on so you can get access to those deprecated node types, come on in here and go to edit and then go to preferences. 
And what you want to do is under interface, turn on developer extras. When I click this, look down here. So developer extras turned on experimental right here. Go to experimental. And what you want to turn on is geometry nodes legacy. Now do keep in mind, if you're working on a project for the future, these are all ultimately going to be removed. But you come in here, you're going to find there are a ton more geometry nodes available now. But unless you're following a specific tutorial, trying to do something in an old way, there's really no reason to be using those old nodes because they are going to all be removed. Uh, and I think they're marked to be removed by Blender 4, uh, but they're being replaced with other workflows. Kind of this stuff is all definitely a work in progress. So if you do use the, um, the deprecated stuff, just do be aware of that. Uh, some of these older nodes are going to go away. So you probably don't want to use them, but that's how you turn it on if you need them, if you want to follow an old tutorial. And then on the topic, once again, of tutorials, there is an entire text-based version of everything we just did. So if you lost, if I lost you at any point in time, it is all here, walks you through everything we just did. And congratulations, you just created your first simple node network for geometry nodes. Hopefully you can see how you can use this, especially in the world of game development. Procedural uh, content generation is a very powerful thing. And as more and more node functionality is added to Blender, this is going to be a bit of a game changer. So hopefully you found that useful. If you did, please do hit like and subscribe and all the rest of that stuff. And let me know what you think comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.